Welcome ladies and gentlemen to another Mr. Lang vlog. Um, this time we're going to be talking about the Vietnam War. The incredible war that has happened in our U.S. history. Okay? Alright, so a couple things real quick. It was the longest war in U.S. history. Period. There's going to be 58,000 killed, 300,000 wounded, 14,000 disabled. Okay? And altogether 800,000 veterans um, diagnosed with um, some readjustment problems, whether it be, you know, post-traumatic stress disorder or, you know, nightmares, reoccurring nightmares, and so on, okay? So, let's go over this real fast here, okay? Again, a lot dead in Vietnam. Two million on the Vietnamese side, four million wounded, ten million displaced from their homes and villages and such, okay? Remember, this is the first living room war. People actually watch this footage of combat on TV, on the nightly news. Again, something that's never been done before uh, prior to this, okay? And a little background of the war, you got to know a little bit about Ho Chi Minh. Ho Chi Minh is the leader of the Vietnamese, um, which they're going to be called the Viet Minh. They're going to be communists, okay? Remember, communism, domino theory, containment. These are all things on why we get into the war, okay? All right. So remember, Vietnam was originally French Indochina. It was actually France's colony, okay? What's up happening is that France is sent aid by the United States. What's up happening is we end up giving them aid for fifteen million dollars to help with the war. We're paying eighty percent of France's military costs for this. And again, why are we paying fifteen million dollars for a war to a country that we're not really that involved with at this point? And the reason is of communism. Okay, remember containment. American policy, resisting further expansion of con communism. We want to keep that contained, as well as Eisenhower and his domino theory. Believe that if one country falls, the rest around them are going to all fall to communism. That's why we continue to flood France with all this money, okay? Again, this is Vietnam uh, today. Let's see, real quick. Uh, if you need more, you can just always Google it. Um, but you do need to know about Dien Bien Phu. Okay, this is where France holds this area, right? Big battle. France holds this area for 50 days, but it does fall to Ho Chi Minh and his men. Now, this is a major turning point because France will pull out of Vietnam after this defeat. And when they do, the United States is still going to be in there, okay? Now, Vietnam is divided according to the Geneva Accords. Geneva Accords happen, and they say at the 17th parallel, Vietnam is going to be two countries. North Vietnam, South Vietnam. North Vietnam is going to be communist. South Vietnam can be democratic, okay? We're going to be on the side of South Vietnam, okay? So, of course, the leader in North Vietnam is Ho Chi Minh. South Vietnam still looks for a leader, and we eventually do get a leader out of that. Um, so, we have Ho Chi Minh, like we said before, leader of the North. Um, also, a lot of South Vietnamese look to him for leadership, okay? He's a hero. Broke up these large states um, and redistributed the land to the peasants, like in communism. Um, they would all be get it equally. Uh, and he'd actually beaten the French, which is something that's crazy for people to think of at this point, that a small army could. And the South gets Ngo Dien Diem, okay? And he was placed into office by the United States. Um, it's a very corrupt government when he gets placed in, okay? Um, does not offer any land distribution. It actually turns a lot of people to the Viet Cong, okay? We're going to get into that in a sec, okay? He's Catholic, Diem. Problem is, is that a lot of Vietnamese at this point are Buddhist, okay? And he does restrict their practices, okay? And they're going to react non-violently to other people, but pretty violent to themselves. We'll get into that. So, there's trouble because now the Viet Cong is brewing, called the VC. What these guys are, these guys that are in South Vietnam, they want to overthrow Diem, okay? They want the U.S. out of Vietnam, and they're going to actually be helped by the North Vietnamese, by the Viet Minh. Uh, and by Ho Chi Minh, okay? But they are going to be primarily in South Vietnam. They're going to do little attacks, okay? Sometimes really big ones. We'll get to that. But again, they're going to get help through the Ho Chi Minh Trail. Make sure you know that because that is a network of paths used by the North Vietnamese to transport supplies to the VC in South, okay? That's about 300,000 people work full-time to maintain this trail. It's a big trail. So GM gets in huge trouble because, again, Buddhists start to protest, and they're going to light themselves on fire. Okay, VC's gaining support, okay, in South Vietnam. They want DM out, okay, and so the U.S. supports a coup, a military coup, coup with a bunch of South Vietnamese um, going and assassinate DM. DM's out of office now, okay. 
Also notice the date, November 1st, 1963. Just 21 days later, Kennedy himself is assassinated. Connection, who knows, conspiracy. So of course we do have Gen General William Westmoreland. He's going to be taking command of Vietnam for the United States, okay? Now, um, on top of that, you want to know about the Secretary of Defense, Robert McNamara. He served under Kennedy and Johnson, and he actually recommends them to escalate the war, send in more troops. Um, then, of course, we have the huge Gulf of Tonkin incident. What that is, is we have the USS Maddox, the U.S. ship, gets attacked by North Vietnamese torpedo boats. Two days later, the ship captain apparently says, we could fire it upon again. Oh, no, we got to do something. Um, it's later found out that it probably wasn't brought, shot on again, but, you know, nevertheless. LBJ does ask... Congress to act. So what ends up happening is you get the Gulf Tonkin Resolution. This gave LBJ a blank check to do whatever he wants to repeal these attacks. It gives him all necessary measures to repeal any armed attack against forces of the United States. This is what really starts the Vietnamese conflict for the United States. We were in there before, okay, but now we're going to start sending troops and escalating from here on out. Um, and so we need more troops. Of course, we're going to grab more troops. We get the draft to go on. Remember we did the draft activity? Awesome activity. But the draft is a lottery random picking of eligible people to join the military. Okay, Help with the growing demands for the troops. That's an actual um, draft card right there. Okay, And during this, you're going to have two different movements. You're going to have the hawks that support the war. You're going to have the doves that oppose the war. Um, and these are just names for people um, that are back here as civilians, um, as well as people that are actually going to be enlisted due to the draft. So there's a few ways to avoid the draft. You have conscientious objectors, very rare, but more you're going to have the deferments, okay, and the dodge drafters. The dodgers are going to go to Canada mostly, okay? Remember, you can have deferments um, about college and so on, okay? Escalation, stats escalate. We have Operation Rolling Thunder. It's intense bombing of North Vietnam. It's supposed to weaken the will to fight of the enemy and assure that the South Vietnamese that we're going to commit to them, okay? But this actually leads to a lot of South Vietnamese to join the Viet Cong because, after all, we are just like bombing North Vietnam, more Vietnamese. There's going to be lots of defoliants used in napalm, okay? Agent Orange is one of these defoliants. And these expose jungle lines, enemy hiding places, and they actually poison enemy food. Now, again, we're there to battle for the hearts and minds of the people. But are we really? Are we really? And that's what you do have to see. What heart, okay? We burn their villages, kill their livestock, and you do have chemicals that cause skin disease, birth defects, and cancer. Okay, and there's some victims here very horrific what these Agent Orange and Napalm can do. Okay, the effects. So we escalate. Um, we have Operation Cedar Falls where we attack a VC headquarters. Um, and the big thing we also do is, to, and during this war, is called Tunnel Rats. These are men responsible for going down into the tunnels okay, to flush out the VC. Remember, the VC tunnels are very narrow and they basically are an entire city underground. You're going to have people go into those and flush them out. A very scary job when one that one. Okay, and this is we start search and destroy missions. Okay, this attempts to drive the Viet Cong from their hideouts. You locate the enemy, call in the airstrike, get them out of their holes, and you get them. So then you also have the Tet Offensive that comes around in 1968. 70,000 North Vietnamese and Viet Cong attack the cities in South Vietnam. This is Tet. This is the new year. We said we're not going to fight them. It's their new year. We're going to let them go. They ended up attacking us, okay? And the VC actually attacked the U.S. Embassy in Saigon, killed five American soldiers. Um, this is a turning point, okay? This proves that the Viet Cong was strong. They were determined. They were organized. Way more than we thought they were going to be, okay? It, this also creates a, a credibility gap where people start to trust the government less from what they've seen. Um, Johnson says he'll halt the bombings. Doesn't halt the bombings. Um, and he announces he will not seek re-election. Huge, okay? Me lie. That's when you have a Charlie company, a group of U.S. soldiers... At the command of um, Lieutenant William Colley, what he does is he does search and destroy missions, and he finds Charlie or the Vietnamese um, villagers, and he destroys them. And what he does is he destroys 300 civilians, old men, women, children, killed by him and his men. And these killings get reported. And two years later, these photographs get out to the public, and many Americans view Vietnam veterans as baby killers. And it's a terrific and horror, it's a horrific thing. So, you're going to have the counterculture re revolution touring this. 
Um, we're going to get more into that in another one, another vlog. Um, you do not going to know about the Students for a Democratic Society, SDS. It's a radical group formed on a major colleges on to protest the Vietnam War. Now, with that, one of the biggest protests is at Kent State University in Ohio. Okay. Students are upset that Nixon ordered troops into Vietnam, uh, to Cambodia, rather. So they burned some ROTC buildings. Remember the famous song by Crosby, Stills, and Nash and Young? Now, the governor actually does martial law. When he does martial law, sends in the National Guard. And these National Guard are going to actually kill four students dead. Okay. Um, that's how big these riots were. And again, a little bit about Nixon. He's actually for the silent majority. Those are individuals that do not demonstrate against the war or speak out against the government. He is going to represent them, he says. Um, and he also promised to bring the boys home from Vietnam, which he does through Vietnamization. A Vietnamization is a call for the gradual withdrawal of U.S. troops and for the Army of the South Vietnam to take more control of their war. And they do. And this is called peace of that honor. Okay? They maintain the U.S. dignity in the face of withdrawal okay, from the war. Now we have a lot of POWs and MIAs during this war. Okay, These prisoner wars, you know, some came home, some didn't. It's a very tragic thing. Um, but what ends up happening is we do have Operation Frequent Wind, largest evacuation on record. Start moving these Americans from Saigon, okay? These American soldiers. However, on April 30th, 1975, Saigon falls to North Vietnam. They reunite Vietnam under one, okay? So now you have South Vietnam being united to North Vietnam as one under Ho communism, and Saigon is renamed Ho Chi Minh City. Okay. Huge policies have changed because of this. You get the War's Power Act, limits President's power to engage troops in undeclared wars. Kind of helps it so we hopefully don't have another Vietnam on our hands ever. Um, as well as the Constitutional Amendment number 26. The 26th Amendment lowers the voting age, so now you, at 18, can vote. Don't have to wait until 21. Awesome, right? Again, we went over these legacies, these numbers before, and they do put up the Vietnam Veterans Memorial. And it's a beautiful thing. It's absolutely touching. It's incredible with all those names, okay? Wow. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, that is basically the most of what you need for this test. Now, also, don't forget, the study guide will help you out as well. Um, and good luck, guys. If you have any more questions, just come see me in class. I'm Mr. Lang. I'll see you guys later.